One of the biggest problems people run into in sales is finding people with a lot of money. The ideal situation for every salesperson is that every person you get on the phone with is wealthy and they have no problem spending, you know, one thousand, five thousand, ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars to hire you or your company to help them with whatever it is that they're doing. And I've basically figured out over the last 12 years of being in sales, doing high ticket sales, my average client spends about $100,000 for us to come in as consultants and help them scale their businesses. I've identified that there are basically three or four really simple ways to find rich clients. And the crazy thing about this is it's easy to do but like Jim Rohn said a long time ago, he said the thing about things that are easy to do is they're also easy not to do. And so the first of these is going to be so obvious that you might not even need to hear this, but go to business seminars. I've talked to a lot of people over the years like, oh, I don't really like seminars or, you know, it's just a lot of motivation and hype and blah, blah, blah. And look, if you're a more advanced business person, let's say you're already making, you know, on the low end, half a million to a million bucks a year, or even up to like 10 to 100 million or more, one of the things that you'll find is that there are a lot of really wealthy business people that spend a big chunk of their time just going to seminars, going to networking events, going to masterminds, um, joining different kinds of business related events to be able to scale their business. Now, most people think you go to the event for the information you get from the speakers. And while it's true that you can get motivated, you can hear some inspiring stories, and sometimes you'll actually get really practical advice on what to do, a lot of the value in going to in-person events is not actually going to come from what you hear from the speakers on stage. It's actually going to come from you networking with people and meeting them. Now, I'm going to give you a quick tip, and this is super obvious as well, but People who buy the VIP tickets and like the special like upfront or backstage tickets are almost always going to be wealthier than the people who buy whatever the cheapest ticket is. And also, wealthy people tend to want to have some kind of special status. So some of the little tips that I can give you about figuring out if somebody's wealthy, and by the way, this isn't true 100% of the time. This is probably only true about 25 to 50% of the time. Wealthier people will have nicer shoes. They'll also have potentially a nice watch, or they'll be dressed in a very nice suit. And I would encourage you, if your goal is to sell to high net worth individuals and also to sell a high ticket product, I'd encourage you to go to an event and look at people and identify, like really start like looking like, okay, I noticed that like all the people sitting up front, not all of them are dressed ultra nice. They're not all wearing fancy suits, but I've noticed like they've got really nice shoes or they have a nice watch or maybe they have expensive glasses, like they've got Gucci or Louis Vuitton glasses. Or maybe, you know, it's just the overall like aura of the people because you'll notice that people who are wealthier tend to have um, just an air of confidence about them. They kind of feel confident. They expect that things are going to go well. So they stand up straight. They've got their shoulders back and ultimately they've got a different vibe about them. And the good thing, by the way, is if you are just starting out, like you're not really making that much money. Sometimes people are scared. They're like, well, you know, what am I going to say? Like, how do I really provide value? And, and to be fair, if you're brand new, your value is not going to be something that you can provide other than being an interesting person for them to talk to. And so just one more kind of side note on this first point, a good thing to do is ask intelligent questions. So let's say you talk to somebody, they're wearing a really nice, let's say it's like a $10,000 suit, they've got a Rolex on, you can tell they like take really good care of themselves. They believe that you know they should be showing what kind of person they are by showing how wealthy they are. And you're like, I want this person to, you know, I want them to give me a chance to work with them. One of the things you can do is if you're newer, rather than trying to tell people what you can do for them, and, and also don't ask, what kind of value can I provide to you? People aren't thinking about you. They're thinking about themselves. So they're not going to be able to figure out for you what you should provide. 
So some good questions to ask when you're networking at in-person events and you find somebody who's very successful is to say, hey, you know, I was thinking about doing this. What do you think? Does that seem like a good idea or what would you do? So people love, especially when they've had a level of success, they love to give advice. They love to feel like they're smart, they're an authority, they're the person to tell you. So ask their opinion a lot. Hey, you know, I'm running this uh, consulting business. We're helping companies to like really scale their sales. I'm curious, like if I wanted to pitch somebody like that does what you do, like what would be important things to say? Or like, how do you feel like I could like work with really smart guys, like, like people like you that are doing X, Y, and Z? And if you notice my language is all about them, it's like, what would you say? How would you say it? Like, and I also slide a little compliment in there. And now if you're talking with somebody who seems kind of stupid, they're a total clod, like don't lie, don't make up compliments, but like ask intelligent questions, show, um, you know, basically deference, show that like you identify them as authority and you believe they can help you. But what you're actually doing is you're getting them to tell you what you need to say to be able to sell them. So when you identify those people, if you're just starting out, it's super important. Make sure that you're not trying to be an authority. Don't ask dumb questions like, what can I do to provide value for you? Um, and, and really like ask questions about stuff. Also, you can ask like, hey, you know, I was reading this book. They were saying that you should do this to like build a great business. What do you think? Is that right? Or what have, what have you done? And, and notice all of my questions are very open-ended. It's not like a yes or no. It's like, can you tell me a lot of stuff? So point number one, go to seminars, go to networking events. Um, you know, I work with a guy named Ty Lopez. He does these big house parties where he invites all these badass entrepreneurs. So like go to events like that where you're able to like network and really hang out and get to meet people. Now, the second point is um, you need to find people who are ultra connectors. And so my definition of an ultra connector is somebody that like literally, you know those old Italian gangster movies and like somebody's like, hey, I need you to take care of this thing for me. And the guy's like, oh, I got a guy. Like an ultra connector, I have a friend named Ovi. He's an ultra connector. He's like, anytime I'm like, hey, I was thinking of this. He's like, oh, dude, let me tell you, like talk to this person. He always has a connection. But the other thing is ultra connectors are always doing stuff. It's like five to seven days a week, they're going to a dinner with somebody. They're taking someone out to lunch. They're doing some kind of seminar. They're going to some kind of mixer. They're going to some kind of party. They're doing some their own event at like a restaurant or something else. So a very simple, easy way to find wealthy people is to find these ultra connectors, these highly social people, because they tend to be meeting so many people that they can connect you. Now, the way to get them to connect you, by the way, is not to ask this question like, hey, do you have anybody you can connect me to that uh, you know has a lot of money or is very successful? The way to do it is to say, hey man, I was thinking about doing this thing. I wanted to help some a couple people with this. Do you know anyone that does this? and ask them and they'll tell you. And the good thing about ultra connectors is they love to talk. So they'll probably say too much and tell you a whole lot of things, but they can connect you and they can make the whole networking thing easier because then you're finding out before you even talk to somebody whether or not they're already financially well off and successful. And you know, one final point, um, so number one is go to events yourself. Number two is, you know, find ultra connectors, make them your best friend, get them to introduce you to other people. Now, this third point is, is not so much about finding wealthy people as it is about getting wealthy people to find you. And so the third point is you should focus on building a well-known and well-liked brand that attracts wealthy people. So if you look at, you know, during COVID, uh, Bernard Arnault was like the wealthiest man in the world, I think for like one or two years. And all of his brands were these luxury brands like Louis Vuitton and all this stuff. And so he automatically attracts wealthy people. Another example is like Rolls Royce. 
So, and this might even be like a fourth point. If you notice, Rolls Royce does something very clever. They don't show their cars at car shows. They show their cars at jet shows where people go to look to buy private jets. So they spend all day looking at these like, you know, five, 10, 20, $50 million jets or more. And then they see a Rolls Royce for 400 grand or 500 grand. And they're like, you know what? I'm going to grab a Rolls Royce. So an interesting point on this last part about building a brand is there's only so many hours in the day that you can get work done. And also the other limitation is you only actually have so much energy. Like, and especially if you're like somebody who works really hard at a certain point in the day, they've done studies on this basically after working 40 hours or eight hours in a day, your productivity goes down by 50%. So it takes twice as long to get the same result. So at a certain point, there's only so much more that you can do in terms of getting in front of people, going out, networking, connecting, doing all this stuff. So one of the things that you want to do is build a brand that attracts wealthy people. And so a way of thinking about this, number one, is just have an incredibly expensive product. Um, but number two, you have to have the value or the perceived value, meaning people feel like it's worth whatever it is you're charging. And that starts by developing a really great product. And I have a new video coming out in about a week talking about how to build confidence. One of the triggers that you're gonna have to get is people are gonna have to feel confident and that's gonna start with you. And so your product has to really be dialed in. So for those of you who are beginners, by the way, start if you can by offering services for free and really focus on whatever it is that you can do to deliver results as quickly as possible so that people start to talk about you. Even better than you building the brand yourself is a whole bunch of people got amazing results from your consulting services and they talked about you for you. And so when it comes to building a brand, make sure like you, you're watching my YouTube video, make sure you're putting out videos on YouTube, make sure you're posting to your social media, make sure that, you know, where you can, you're branding your clothes, you're branding your car, you're branding your office. You need to have your name in as many places as possible to take advantage of a cognitive bias called the mere exposure effect. Now, this is the last point I'm going to leave you with. This is worth considering and coming up with a game plan around. The mere exposure effect basically says that just seeing something often enough makes you more likely to know, like, and trust that thing, product, or service. So one of the reasons why Coca-Cola and McDonald's still invest so much money into advertising, billboards, branding, McDonald's has the big arches and all this stuff, isn't because they're failing companies, it's because they know that if they keep showing up every single day, people are gonna be more likely to buy their products. And people are gonna believe, even though, by the way, Coca-Cola and McDonald's are great examples of this, they're more likely to believe that they should want those products, even though Coca-Cola and McDonald's over you know, your whole life is actually a bad thing. You know, and, you know, diabetes, health problems, heart attacks, all this other stuff. So all of those points together, take advantage of this stuff as much as possible, get to events, connect with super connectors, make sure that you're building a brand so that people know who you are and show up every single day to take advantage of the mere exposure effect. And by the way, in about a week, I'm going to be putting out a video. So make sure to subscribe, subscribe here on my YouTube channel, like this video. You know, if you can throw a comment below, if you, by the way, don't just comment to me. If you have something networking wise that's helped you to become really good at finding wealthy clients, post it in the chat to help other people who are interested in building their own businesses and make sure to subscribe. Come back next week. I'm going to do a video specifically on how to build ultra confidence around your products and services so that you can close more sales.